Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today we're going to have a little play with the Castle Arts coloured pencils. But before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure you've hit that subscribe button and if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel grow, which in turn means I can make more videos like these. That being said, let's talk about these, shall we? So I've had these for a good while now. I think I picked them up maybe before Christmas. I'm not entirely sure. And I had every intention of using them and they kind of just sat there with a couple of other sets of coloured pencils that I've got. With the April scroller box having some coloured pencils in there, it kind of sparked me into giving these another try. I picked up the Kandinsky set. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly or not. And they had quite a number of sets which were based on different artists, but I picked this set up because it just looked really colourful and I kind of figured we'd have pretty much all bases covered. And anything that was missing, I could use my odds and ends coloured pencils which I've received from scroll boxes and upcrates and just picked up along the way. So that is what I do here. There are 24 colours in the set, which you'll have seen me just swatch out, but I will run through the list nonetheless. We have Cadmium Yellow, Marigold, Yellow Okra, ter Terracotta Light, Flesh Deep, Burnt Okra, Chinese Orange, Scarlet Red, Indian Red, Alzerian Crimson, however you say that, Grenadine, Purple Lake, Mauve, Mauve Deep, Mulberry, Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue, Castle Green, Prussian Green, Chrome Green, Cadmium Green, Leaf Green Light, Warm Grey Light and Ivory Black. And it's kind of weird really because looking at the box it did suggest there was a white on the external cover but there isn't one so I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, let's talk about the drawing. So I thought a nice looking heron would be an excellent subject and I got my reference from Free References for Artists, which is a Facebook page and it has an amazing amount of professional, semi-professional, amateur and people who've just taken a photograph that they think is going to make a good artist reference. And I do think it is an excellent resource. The particular photograph I saw really struck my attention because of just how detailed it was and I'm no photorealism kind of drawer and I think with enough practice I could be but I kind of don't want to be. Personally I want to make my work look like it's been created and that's that's just how I roll. I think there's some amazing skills in photorealism and I have a few good friends who are amazing at it. But for me, I kind of like to try and have a balance of it looking like it's been created as well as it containing the same values as the original image, for want of better words. The paper I'm using is the Windsor & Newton pastel paper and that's 160 GSM and it was a toned set with six grey colours and I picked the lightest and part of me kind of regrets picking the lightest grey but Oh well, you know, I like a challenge. I will hasten to add as well, I do use blending pens and those are the do ones. They come in a twin pack and I will leave a link to those down below. I know a lot of artists out there tend not to use them or any other ble blending products, but I kind of don't mind. Sometimes I just need it to blend. I also use the Derwent blending pencil and I think I have a Rembrandt one as well and I switch between the two, it's whichever one's at hand, the, the quickest. And finally, about 12 months ago, Scrawler did a coloured pencil box then and they included a little whiteout potion which was like a liquid coloured pencil in white. I use that too because sometimes you just need to get a good highlight on there. And of course, I also mentioned just any odds and ends coloured pencil wise, they live in a pencil case just dedicated for all of these random ones we get in boxes. Those include the 
Faber-Castell polychromos as well as the Koenor hardmouths and I think even there might be one or two Derwents knocking about. So the main thing I've learned as I've gone along with using coloured pencils is to layer and layers, lots of layers and just build it up gradually. If you put it down too faint it's okay, just give it another layer. I started off with the heron's beak first because I just needed to get a bold, impactful colour down. Kind of just sets the tone for the rest of the piece in my opinion. It's just how I chose to work. As well as adding that blue flash across its head. I'd blended the bill out using the Derwent blender pen because obviously that's quite a smooth texture so I didn't really want any of the coloured paper peeping through there. I wanted it to look as solid as it actually was. The blues provided by the Castle Arts set were used just as a base colour and then I went over it with the black and again I do keep coming back to these things. It really is a case of just lightly adding the colours to where the biggest tonal differences are and working upwards from that. Now I'm not a massive coloured pencil user, it's something I had a massive phase through gosh about coming up to 10 years ago perhaps and I had Prismacolors well when I say I had Prismacolors I still have them and yeah I have some experience but it's not my main medium so to speak I find coloured pencils really good to go to life drawing classes because it's a quick medium if you want it to be that is I find them really useful for getting colour information down quickly and especially on a nice toned piece of paper when you can add those highlights with a good quality white pencil it's it's chef's kiss good however with the pandemic and i guess to a certain extent just life and work i haven't been able to attend any live drawing classes for quite a while now i think i might start them back up when we head into autumn they usually have a summer break so i, I kind of can't see the point in going just yet but I might consider going back in autumn and plus it won't be as hot there and I won't be as cranky either but anyway I'm waffling I probably will waffle quite a bit through this video as it is quite a long one so let's get back to these colored pencils so the first thing I always like to judge a pencil on for want of better words there is how well they sharpen and a lot of coloured pencils that you get they're already pre-sharpened I hate the nibs on them when they're like that because there is no pointy tip it's literally just cut off flat and apart from swatching I personally just don't think that's a good I guess good point to start off on but when I sharpen them none of the leads broke they sharpen quite nicely a couple of the barrels of the pencil I guess how they were manufactured went a little bit against the grain of the wood which it was made from but eh, it still sharpened fine the lead was fine and that's all I was interested in pressure wise so I am trying to be a little bit more gentle with the process I still can't help being heavy-handed and occasionally yes a few leads did ping off but nothing terrible and that might just be me holding back a bit I thought the colour payoff was really good as well you didn't have to put a huge amount of pressure down and the colour was there and with a good quality eraser you could lift up any any little whoopsies here and there that you've made along the way so that's always good I found that areas such as the heron's eye that I'm drawing right now I could apply a decent amount of pressure without the lead pinging and just adding that strong level of colour and pigment that I wanted to add so that area stands out. So why did I pick a heron? Well apart from seeing this photograph and thinking oh my gosh that is awesome where I live surprisingly we do see the occasional heron in fact, to be fair, where I used to live, we also used to see the occasional heron and it would go round and steal people's fish out of their ponds. There was like a Facebook group dedicated to keeping an eye out for this heron so people could take whatever measures it was to prevent this heron having a free lunch. 
But back to where I am now, it's a pretty residential area, it has mostly houses like most places are where you live, but there are a couple of areas where there's pools of water and there's a river and a canal nearby so obviously that's going to attract them. And when I walk my lovely walking companion Chester, sometimes I will go and have a little check and it does appear that there have been a few that have nested nearby which is wonderful. One of the weird things that surprises me about herons is they nest in trees. And I don't know why that's weird, because a lot of birds nest in trees, but I wouldn't expect a heron to, like, geese don't, ducks don't, I don't even think either of them really have nests as such, swans don't, many of the aquatic birds around where I live at least don't nest in trees, so I find it really, I don't know, really surprising to see heron nests in trees, and they're massive, you could like, keep a human in there. Not that I'm advocating you climb into heron's nests, by the way. It's just a, an exclamation. But yes, that's kind of why I wanted to do a picture of a heron. I just wanted to celebrate the fact that I live near to them. Although saying that, if you want me to, I could actually try and do a picture of Chester. I think it would be quite nice to do a pet portrait. I know a lot of you guys do pet portraits. So I could do another video using a different set of coloured pencils that I've got and see how it goes. So please let me know down below. And plus, I mean, I might be incredibly biased, but I do think my dog's really cute. Anyway, I've got a little bit more to talk about. Now there's a bit more on screen. So I've added the blue flashing above where the heron's wing and body are. And again, you'll see it's just lots of little layers. I do find it very much an advantage to use these Derwent blender pens. And, and it's weird because like there's a really fine one, which is what I'm using now. And then there's a slightly thicker one. And the fine one has quite a coarse tip, so I think that's pretty good for areas where there's quite a good build-up of colours there, because it, it kind of scratches it and di dilutes it a little bit more and pushes it into the paper without affecting the surface too much. The one with the fatter nib, which is a bit squishier, that's great for areas where you've layered and you perhaps just want to blend it in. Now, rather than just concentrating on just filling an area with colour, I obviously want to get some details in here. And you do have to study what you're drawing. So if you are referring from a photograph, for things like feathers and fur and hair in general, and even you could apply that to plants as well, take notice on the direction that they are going. So obviously this bird's wings are closed and their feathers sit in a certain way and try and try and replicate that with the direction that you draw with your coloured pencils. If you're wanting to do a detailed piece then details are the name of your game. If you're wanting to do something that's more colourful and more filling in colour areas then again that's a different approach and you have to take a more softer and more even approach with it. Because once that pencil marks down, even though you can lift it off with an eraser, if you put a little bit too much pressure down, there's no amount of blending that's going to get rid of a line that's been misplaced. So I suppose I'd better mention, you might have noticed I have a plaster on my knuckle on here, or a band-aid for my US friends out there. Nothing terrible happened. But I've started gardening, because it's obviously spring now, and for some reason my watering can, or my plant mister, you have to unscrew it, and there's a really horrible sharp bit on it, and I completely forgot, and it just caught my knuckle. It's not gory or anything, but it was getting in the way, so I, I just covered it. I, it's okay though, that's just in case you're wondering. And you know what, it's one of them little injuries where... It, honestly, it was like a paper cut. It was one of them injuries where, you know, I washed my hands with soap and the soap would get in there and it would hurt. But it's like, well, you've got to use soap. And like, I just catch it on everything because it was in such an awkward place. So, but it, it's, it was just one of them little injuries. Anyway, back to the drawing because I can sense the waffle starting back up again. 
So for this lower area of the heron, it's quite a dense coloured area and I again, I didn't want the colour of the paper or the light tone of the paper to be quite so apparent. So I blended a blue and a black on the page. Again, just very, very light coats. And I decided to use the coarser blender pen just so I could make sure that then parts were broken up and it dissolved enough so it would leave a smoother surface to work on. And whilst that was drying, it was time to refer, refer, refine the crest on the heron's head. For stronger details like that, you really need to make sure your pencil sharpener is a good one and you've got a good sharp tip. There's no point going over that in a slightly worn down tip of the pencil because well, you're just going to have too thick of a line and especially when it comes to doing the detail because I wanted it to be a bit bolder. I'm obviously applying a bit more pressure and that's going to mean you're not going to be able to lift it off as easily. Now, once that area had dried after I'd used the blender pen on it, that was the time to start adding the textures in. And again, I'm still following that rule of keeping all of my lines in that one direction because it's still a texture there. Again, the reason I just added that layer below was just to reduce the amount of paper showing through. I would just do a few little sections at a time and swap out which pencil I was using because I, I, to be honest, it does get a little bit tedious just using the same colour when you just want to use another colour. That might just be me though. And as well, it is quite a long process. I'd say this picture took me about six hours in total to do start to finish and that's not to say there wasn't a good copious amount of staring into space and sipping tea or perhaps just watching something on YouTube for five minutes because I do that too but all in all I'd say I spent about six hours working on this. You will be super pleased to know though that it's not Put me off using them some more. I have actually got a video planned with Finley and Claudia using coloured pencils and it will be these same ones again as well as my additional loose end ones from the pencil case but I wanted to use them in combination with marker pens for the same reason as why I use the blender pen. I wanted to get a good foundation of colour down and then perhaps bring some tonal variations through but using the coloured pencils. That one didn't quite take as long because the marker pens kind of handled all the fiddly bits that obviously are going on on screen here now and I actually really like how it came out and I kind of want to do some more but you're going to have to let me know whether you want to see me do more of that and obviously you're going to have to watch that video which hasn't been edited it at this point. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my history using coloured pencils and, and it's weird really. Again, going back to 10 years ago when I picked them up and did some serious work we'll say, it was because Prismacolors were super, super viral at the time. It, the, the Everywhere was saturated with people coming out with these super realistic portraits and like I say, about 10 years ago, it might be a little bit less actually, but around 10 years, I wanted to give that a try. I wanted to see if I could do it and I just wanted to see what all the hype was about and I, I guess maybe that's poss possibly why I kind of dwindled from using them and just started exploring other mediums again. Who knows? But before that, I can honestly say the last time I'd probably used coloured pencils in a serious capacity was like when I was at high school and I can't even say it was towards the end of high school. I'd say it was sort of mid high school when I was doing art at school and coloured pencils or the blocks of tempura paint were the only things really we had to work with. And it's really weird. I think we did oil pastels now and then and it was strange because we had nothing to blend oil pastels with. We, we were not allowed to use any Terps, I suppose that's probably not a bad reason, or any other spirits to really make the most out of oil pastels. And to be honest, when I was at school, nobody really taught us how to blend coloured pencils. It was literally just filling an area with colour just for the sake of. 
you can also imagine as well school materials especially like in the late well mid to late 90s they weren't great they, they were there to do a job what was used in the art class would be the same as what would be used in a maths class if we were coloring a pie chart in or what would be used in a geography class for coloring I don't know areas of maps in so it was literally a one-size-fits-all probably not really artist quality in the slightest and to be honest I hated using them I remember we had an exam I think it was like an end of year exam it wasn't like any of the important ones but it was still an exam nonetheless and we had to do a project based on I think it could have been a landscape who knows it was millions of years ago and I just remember like outright refusing to use them I said look I've got my own watercolors I'd much rather use this the criteria doesn't stipulate it has to be colored pencils please don't make me use them and that pretty much was it for using them in an artistic capacity. There might have been one or two occasions where I'd been given some and I might have used them again roughly at life drawing when it was compulsory at college but we were mostly encouraged to use either graphite or chalk and charcoal then. We Coloured pencils were a long process and in the early noughties which is when I was at college there wasn't really internet access available where we could just buy Prismacolors. It was literally whatever was in the shop. And most of the time it was either Crayola or, I don't know, something you'd get from a supermarket. I, I just don't really have much recollection of seeing vast arrays of coloured pencils. I certainly hadn't even heard of a Faber-Castell polychromo. Honestly, it was, uh, it was primitive times when I was at college for art. I mean... Gosh, if all these resources had been available to me back then, who knows what I'd be doing with my art. I'd probably still be doing this, actually. <laughs> but can any of you lovely lot relate? Are, you, are any of you as old as I am and can remember not really having a huge array of art materials at your fingertips? Anyway, all that waffling on, I've totally bypassed a lot of what's going on here. So I'm pretty much at the stage where it's refining everything. All of my layers are down. Again, I'm sure you've seen whilst I've been waffling on, it's been a slow process, but nonetheless, it's not something you should rush. And it's now time to add more of those feather details in. And because I'd already planned that out with the direction I was adding those layers in, it's a little bit more forgiving when you actually go and add those details, like the long stranded feathers at the bottom. Most of that is, again, achieved from what I'd put down with the layers and just with a couple of more bolder, contrasting lines, tone-wise that is, you get the effect that there's feathers and you can see the shadows they cast upon each other. I felt that some of the lines were looking a little bit harsh or maybe I hadn't pressed on hard enough. So using the softer blender pen just worked a treat. It just allowed me to blur those lines slightly and go in and rectify any details that I thought needed sharpening up. Sometimes you can't erase them. Sometimes you don't want to erase everything else. I can't be as accurate, accurate with an eraser. So it's just nice to go in there. I also used that weird potion from Scrawlerbox that came with the Posca pencils last year to add those highlights in. I did try and achieve it using a white polychromo, but because the tone of the paper is quite similar to the output of the polychromo, it wasn't really having much of an effect. So having that little potion on hand was super handy, but I'm pretty sure some of the other thicker white inks that you use, perhaps with markers or watercolors or a good goo might still do the job. We're definitely at a stage though where a sharp pencil is a necessity and I really do recommend you get a good sharpener. The Steadlier one, I think it's Steadlier, that we had in the April scroll box is really good. I have a Derwent, I suppose, a manual pencil sharpener, one of them ones you clamp onto your desk. That's pretty good as well. I think they're a little less traumatic on the leads too. Also, there is the Coombe sharpener, and that's a double barreled one, and there's one where it literally just strips the wood away, and then one where you can sharpen the lead. That's really good as well. I think my blades need replacing on mine, though, so I didn't use that in this particular instance. So, yeah, there you go. 
Eraser wise, I kind of like to use a plastic based one. I just find it lifts things up a little bit better. And I tend to find as well with the more crumbly ones, it takes off more than I want and makes a mess. So I do recommend a good plastic based eraser. Just check it's not gonna leave any residue behind, any pigmented residue or whatnot, cause that's gonna ruin your picture. Other hints and tips as well, for me personally, I don't normally like to have a very hard surface underneath, but because the paper was quite soft, I had a sheet of Perspex or acrylic underneath mine, just so I'd got a really hard surface, and it just meant that the lead caught into the paper a little bit better. All in all, I found the Castle Arts coloured pencils very enjoyable to work with. They were relatively Katie proof, the colour payoff was nice, and they blended together really, really well, and they surprised me. I think once I've used these up, I'd probably buy some more. Of course, let me know what you guys think of what I created with it and what your experiences are with these coloured pencils. There should be a video that you're gonna enjoy on screen right now, along with a playlist where I feature other art materials. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching, especially if you've made it this far. And I'll see you lovely lot on the next video. Bye!